Hi everyone and welcome to the Simple Knit Podcast. My name is Eleanor and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry at Simple Knit Co. Thank you so much for taking some time to spend with me today to talk about knitting and all of the other fibro goodness that I've been getting up to. I hope that you've been well. Um, if this is your first episode watching, thank you very much. And if you have watched my first episode from two weeks ago, thank you so much for coming back and um, spending some time and catching up with me. It's been an interesting two weeks, um, not going to lie. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen I have broken my ankle. Uh, yeah, I've got a new friend. Um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it's been a real test of my patience. You can see my little crutches over there. Um, being kind of basically bedridden, housebound has not been, not been super fun. I mean, I'm kind of a, I class myself as kind of a homebody anyway, but when it's enforced, it's not super pleasant. <laughs> um, I'm having an operation on my foot next week um, to screw all the bits of my ankle back together after I just took a really bad fall. I just slipped and fell on the wrong angle. It's one of those things. It just, it just happens. So <sighs> I try to be as positive as possible. Um, I'm going to be off it for at least another six weeks um, in a cast for eight weeks. But I have a really, I have a lot of faith in the surgeon that I have. All of the doctors and everyone I've dealt with so far has been really wonderful. So there has been quite a lot of knitting time over the last couple of weeks. I'm sure you, you can imagine that when you can't really do anything else, there's a lot of knitting. So I have quite a few things to show you today. Um, first of all, I'll just... I'm wearing, I showed in the last episode, this Fukuro top by Whitney Hayward, and I'm wearing that today. Um, I love it. It's really nice, really comfy. It's just made out of, um, sorry, made out of fibre Natura cotton wood, which is 100% cotton, and this beigey colour at the top is called Barbara, this black colour is called Joe, and the cream colour is just called cream. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice, really comfy top to wear. As you can see, it's a nice boxy fit and it just it just sits really comfortable and it's really, really easy to wear. So let's get started with some finished objects. Because my reach is somewhat limited, you really needed that gesture, but um, my reach is somewhat limited. So I have all of my stuff in this bag beside me here. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Uh, the first first project I have to show you, it was um, a work in progress last week, but I'm very excited to have finished my this little judoka bag. Um, it's a design by Leah Moyer from epi episode, from issue 25 of Pom Pom Quarterly Magazine. Um, this is a gift for a friend of mine, and I'm just so glad, as I said last time, it's a very overdue birthday gift, and I'm just so excited that I have it finished and all sewn together. Well, notice I'm holding it this way because my uh, sewing kind of left something to be desired. There's a little bit that really shouldn't be. That should be like that, but it just doesn't like to sit. So it does look a bit better from this side, but I finished it all, sewed it all together. It's a really nice size. You'll be able to fit um, quite a lot of stuff in there. And as with a bento bag, you just kind of ooh, tie it at the top and makes a nice little handle. Yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it. So I used um, Heritage Cotton 4-ply and in the colours we've got black, pale mauve and this green is called Jade. Um, I'm really happy with how the colours look together. I'm really happy with the stripes. Hold it a bit closer so you can see. Yeah, oh that made the colour weird. That's better. I'm just really happy with it and I'm sure my friend is going to love it. Hopefully I will see her pretty soon. <laughs> but yeah, it's very good to have. It's just a relief, you know. Gift knits, I mean, it sounds awful when you call them like an obligation knit, but it kind of does feel like that when you have a deadline. And it's just such a relief to get them off the needles and be able to get them to their... Um, to their forever home. That's 
more what you say for adopted animals but yeah just to get it off to its recipient and it's just a relief that now I can just knit on crap for myself all day um I don't I don't know how many handmade gifts I'm gonna make this year um I think I might try and knit some little um Christmas decorations for my colleagues but and maybe try and do something for I've maybe do something for my mum um but yeah I don't think I'm gonna go too crazy on the handmade gifts this year because basically I just want to spend all my time knitting for myself so that was the judoka bag um I've got all of the information about this project and all of my projects on my Ravelry project pages so if there's any information that you that I've neglected to mention or put in the box below um, just check out the Ra Ravelry project page and hopefully that will answer any questions that you have oh the one thing I did want to say about this I used way less yarn than I thought I was going to so um, I used less than 150 gram skein of each of the colors for the whole bag um, so I think I had about just over five grams left of each of the um, colors and the black I had I think I only used like two-thirds of the ball or something so that was a nice surprise it does mean I have some more quite a bit of full ply cotton left over to I might make I think I might try and make some little um like um, produce bags for grocery shopping or I mean 100% cotton it's really handy for things like that for making like shopping bags for making face cloths washcloths which are also very good gifts tie it back around um yeah so very stoked to have finished that so this next finished object that I have is actually something you haven't seen before because I cast it on and finished it since last we spoke and that is this little baby so it's a hat I know it looks very small but it's a ribbed hat and it's for my tiny head there we go so this is the Roku hat by let me get this right, Olga Berea Kefelian or Olga Jazzy. Um, I've knit this pattern before. I knit one for my dad for Father's Day and it's just a really, really great hat pattern. I know it's just, I mean, it's just a one by one ribbed hat and it's one of those things, you know, it's like, do I want, there are so many hat patterns around. Is it worth, you know, paying for a paid for pattern for something that's so simple? But the construction of this hat is just, it's just perfect. The crown decreases are really great. I'm really quite fussy with crown decreases on hats. Um, before I buy a hat pattern, I actually go and look on everyone's Ravelry project pages because they always look really nice in the um, in the pictures that the designers have taken. But I go and I scrutinize the crowns on all of the Ravelry project pages. Um, cause I don't like, I just, I'm really fussy and I just, I know what I like. So this hat is really great and it has a nice little tubular cast on, which I love. Um, I know a lot of people find them quite fiddly, um, but I really like it. The tutorial that I, well, the method that I use that works best for me, um, Claire from Sister Mountain has got a really great video showing how to do it. And um, because I was unable to be getting up and down, I actually did for the first time the tubular cast on just using a circular needle. I didn't have any straight needles with me and it wasn't worth the effort of hopping all the way to pick up a straight needle. And it was fine. Um, I know that the, t the stitches are really twisty that first round, but once you've done it a couple of times and you know how to kind of look at them and which way to pop your needle in for that first row, it really it's really no trouble so that's this Roku hat and the yarn the lovely mild yarn is um, Great Ocean Road woolen mill alpaca and this is the eight ply in a the colors called Evie and Valentine it's not actually available anymore um, and this is what I used for my weekender jumper um, well for the body of it I did the like shoulders and sleeves in black because I didn't have quite enough of this um, I kind of bought all that was left at the time so that's the little label which is gonna be backwards for you so I don't know why I'm showing you um, so it's great ocean road woolen mill 
and this colour is called Eevee and Twilight. And I think, because it's undyed alpaca, I think that's actually the names of the alpaca that the yarn comes from. So I still had, I used about 50 grams for this hat, so about one, one of these little skeins. And I have two more left, so I'm either going to make a couple more for some people or do something else, maybe make a cowl, but I just really love, it's just like a mild black and white. Because it's alpaca, it has this, I'm not sure if you can see the amazing halo it has, um, but it's really great and this hat fits really well. I knit the second size, um, and I knit, actually I knit the body about an inch shorter, I didn't want it to be too long and I'm not going to put a pom pom on. But that's how it looks, um, and I'm really stoked. So that's a Roku hat and another started and finished since last time. The last kind of finished object I have is half of just one sock. You'll remember last time I spoke about my obsession with this amazing sock pattern by Jess Gore of the Sweater Collective. This is the Easy Feet sock that I have slightly modified to do top down and with a two by two rib, excuse me. I don't have my, I have to go on an expedition to get my smaller darning needle to weave in the ends. But so I have one of these and this yarn is Retrosaria Mondim in the color 204. And it is just super lovely. This pattern's really, really squishy, really nice. And on the foot of the sock, where it's just in plain stockinette, you can kind of see it comes up almost like a little micro stripe. So I've got the pinks and purples and then the blues and yellows. Is that in focus? I don't know. But it's really nice. It's really lovely. The sock fits really great. I'm super happy with that. So we have one, one sock and I have started the second one. Just got a little baby bit. Just I've done the cuff and a couple of pattern repeats pattern repeats i don't know why i'm saying that so strangely but yeah there we go and there is the ball as well let's give you another look at that really cute ball band art and yeah i'm really happy i've tried the sock on it worked fits really well the heel flap looks great there was a bit of like weird pooling on either side of the um gusset I guess because it does kind of, it is designed to knit up in a micro stripe when you have those longer rows around the gusset. So it's kind of like got this on one side, all the blue and yellow together. And on the other side, all the pink and purple together, which is fine. Um, the colors are really nicely random over the heel flap which is good and then they kind of it settles back down into the for the rest of the body of the sock a nice even distribution of all the colors so yeah I mean it's not going to be wool sock weather for like forever but it's really nice to have another one off the needles and I do this pattern it's just so I said it before I'll say it again I love all of Jess's patterns and this one's really nice and squishy and lovely so really excited to have that one all done so that's all of my finished objects for since for the last couple of weeks now I will show you some works in progress and the first one I'll show you is a new cast on since last time I saw you um, it's another pattern from issue 25 of pom pom quarterly which I love um, as I said, I love everything in this magazine and I already had the yarn. I'd already bought the yarn to make this and so when I felt like I really felt like casting on something new This is what I went for. So it is the Deauville tank by Tina C and that's the Picture It's just a really nice um, kind of striped tank top with um, It has little pearl ridges over it. So you can kind of see in the picture but it almost has this optical illusion of vertical stripes along with the horizontal stripes. And that's achieved by doing little pearl ridges throughout. And it's really, really lovely. So I cast it on yesterday maybe? Or the day, and I think it was yesterday or the day before. It was the day before, yes. And this is what I have done so far. I'm using the recommended needle size. 
and this is what I have so far so as you can see I'm just working on the body and yeah I'm really loving it so far it's really kind of because you just have to kind of remember when to do your little pearl ridges it's really easy um, it doesn't take a lot of concentration and it's just really really good for yeah just very a very nice relaxing knit but it still kind of keeps you on your toes one thing I'm worried about I think is just because it's sitting bunched up on the needle sometimes that little rib around the bottom flips up but when it's kind of straightened out it doesn't do that so hopefully once it's not no longer bunched up on the needles that rib at the bottom won't flip up because it does kind of go from the rib straight into some color work so when it flips up you can see all the little floats on the inside um, so hopefully that will remedy itself once it's no longer oh there it is there it's doing it there once it's no longer bunched up on the needle so I'm using the same yarn as is used for the sample because I just loved it so much um, so it's shiny happy cotton by wool and the gang and we have this is cinder black and this is purple haze so it does almost look like black and white but it's actually a really nice really pretty pale purple um, and they look really lovely the colors look really lovely together and I'm really really liking the way it's knitting up um, this is like me adding color to my wardrobe I am kind of a neutral girl so having that like pale purple with the black is gonna be a really nice a really nice addition I think so I'm really happy with that that's the Doville tank by Tina C yeah really 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 happy um, next you've seen all of these ones before so it won't take too long to go through the rest of my works in progress because you've seen them all before and you'll just be able to see how much knitting I've been doing so this one here this is the Lydia tank by Courtney Little of Ivy and Autumn it's that really pretty lace panel across the bottom and then I've just been working on the body I think last time I just done a couple of rows of the body so yeah and I did most of that yesterday actually I haven't knit on this one very much but I did most of that kind of yesterday while I was watching Breaking the Magician's Curse no, no, Breaking the Magician's Curse, Breaking the Magician's Silence, whatever it's called, that masked magician show where a magician in a creepy mask shows you all the secrets on magic, um, behind like big magic tricks. I've watched it a hundred times and I can never remember how the tricks are done. So it's a fun surprise every time for me. Um, gosh, I love that show. But yeah, knit on this a bunch. And so I'm using, as you can see, probably because I've been waving them around, I've got two skeins of yarn. So... The bottom lace section I just used the colors are a bit weird today the lighting's a bit funny oh that's pretty good um so that bottom section the lace I just used um hedgehog fibers I think it's the twist sock in the colorway pine and then for the body I'm alternating between that pine color and hedgehog fibers skinny singles in crybaby which is having actually this really nice effect. I wasn't sure how good it was going to be, but it is actually really, really good. As you can see, so there's like some brownie, greeny patches from the pine and then the really nice pops of neon from Crybaby. So that's the two skeins together. So yeah, this was left over from, as I've said before, our Birds of, the Fe Birds of a Feather shawl that I knit for my mum for Christmas last year. That was an endeavour. Um, it's nothing like two in the morning on the 23rd of December in the middle of a Brisbane heat wave sitting with a giant mohair shawl over you frantically knitting I'm not gonna be doing that again this year definitely it was worth it my mum loves it and it's a beautiful beautiful shawl and a beautiful pattern um, lots of people seem to have um, been picking it up recently which is really really nice to see because it's a really lovely pattern probably I think my favorite out of all the Andrew Mar Andrea Maori shawl patterns and it's other color pine it's just a nice kind of neutrally brown with some really nice little bright green pops through it but yeah I'm really liking this and I did add about um, to this body section I did add about 
I, I added 10 rows before I started doing the armhole decreases and just because it is a pattern written for a sport weight yarn I'm using fingering weight so I'm going to be blocking it quite aggressively this way so I wanted to make sure I had sufficient length this way and yeah I'm really happy with that so far it looks like from the amount I have to go it's going to be like have still quite a bit more length up here so um, it'll be good for wearing over high-waisted denim and stuff so that's good I just didn't want it to be too short really was the yeah I was a bit worried because some of the samples are quite short and I didn't want mine to be super short so yeah I just added a few extra rows and easy peasy so that's the Lydia tank next I have let's do a, a sock and then one more top um, this is just the ribbed sock that I keep in my handbag for knitting um, I knit a bunch on this at the hospital that was fun I think I just had like a little baby cuff last time I saw you and now we have a heel and I'm just doing the gusset decreases at the moment so this yarn is um, the coop knits socks yeah always struggle to say that one by um, fiber spates and the color is obsidian um, it looks tiny it stretches out I have tried this on about 20 times because I was very worried about how small it was how small it looks and I was knitting it my mom had said to me she's like what are you knitting she's like is that a sleeve I'm like no it's a sock I promise it's definitely going to be big enough to go on a foot um because that two by two rib really sucks in um but yeah I did a knit a bunch of this when I was in the emergency room uh, puffing away on one of those green whistle things that I mean didn't really work but uh, so that was that was me sitting in they, and they had I don't know why they had this channel on in the emergency room but um it was like one of the digital free-to-air channels it was like Hogan's Heroes I think it was an episode of Bonanza like oh not what you want you want some nice distraction finally it got to be I think Ellen was on so at least that was something no, that was at a different appointment that Ellen was on. There was nothing good on in the waiting room. So, um, and I couldn't do anything. <laughs> I had my ankle strapped by the paramedic. I was just sitting there. Couldn't even get up to go to the bathroom. Um, so, I just sat, panicked, and knitted. <laughs> so, I did a whole bunch of this lovely sock. And I have been pretty good about just keeping this in my bag. Just so I always have something with me. Um, and I do just want to show you this really cute stitch marker when it untangles itself. There we go. So it's a little tiny Deathly Hallows. Um, I got that when I bought some a Harry Potter colorway from Ashley of Nomadic Yarns. Um, she included this really cute little Deathly Hallows project um, stitch marker. So I really love that. So yeah, this is just living in this tiny little green bag that I, it is actually a bento bag as well, ironically enough, back to bento bags that I just tie and it just lives in my purse. So that's really small and handy. And the last project I've been working on, and I have actually made pretty significant progress on this one. It is my um, lady slipper top by um, Fiona Alice from issue 16 issue 16 yes issue 16 of Amarie Sue magazine so it's just a rectangle like it's not very exciting to look at so that's what we've got I think I was about I'd done maybe about that much last time we spoke so I've done a nice big chunk and I have to do I think about another 20 centimeters of just like back and forth stockinette with a nice little edge detail. I'll show you this little edge detail because I do really love it. It's like a little garter braid just to help it sit nice and flat. And this really cute lace panel that I'm very sure I've been looking at it quite a lot and I can just see about 20 mistakes in it but because it's a really simple lace it looks fine but yeah this is just a little bit I really really want the end product of this I really really love this top and I really want to be able to wear it so it's just like it's one of those one of those projects that you have to give yourself like a time I'm gonna sit I'm gonna work on this I'm gonna do 10 rows 20 rows whatever 
Um, but as I said, the real star of the show is the colour. Oh gosh, stab knitting needle through it, excuse me. Um, which is from Fibersmith and it is their hand dyed alpaca silk linen blend in the colour haystack. Let me see if I can get this colour to show up. No, that's a bit grey. It's looking a bit grey. Come on. Oh, the clouds just came over, so it's probably not going to work. Oh, back here is a little bit better. Yeah, so back here it's a little bit of a better representation. It's kind of a beigey yellow with these really lovely dark speckles through it. So, yeah, my motivation to finish it is very high, but it's, it's like one of those things like knitting a scarf where you're just doing the same thing backwards and forwards forever. Um, and because it's the back piece, I actually did add, I'm knitting the size medium, but I did actually add a bit of extra length, um, about, ends up being about five centimeters, um, to the front piece, um, on the neck section. So you kind of do the neck decreases and then just knit it straight to a certain length. And I kind of knit to the length they said, and I wasn't, wasn't happy with the length, so I added ended up being about five centimeters um just so it's I've got a bit more space because I have quite a large bust so I like to make sure I have sufficient things so things aren't too high or too uncomfortable I also don't like a very tight neckline so I like to give myself plenty of room excuse me someone decided to have a bit of a honk outside um yeah so it does mean that this gets even more tedious because the um extra length I'm going to add before the neck decreases on this one so um because I don't want I've got a bit more space down this way at the front but I don't want too much down that way at the back so I'm going to add that extra length before the decreases which just means <laughs> backwards and forwards on a million uh, feels like a million stitches um but it's going to be so worthwhile it's going to be such a pretty top so yes I, I'm still enjoying it still loving it but and it's good and at least it's kind of good and mindless so at the moment when I'm kind of watching a lot of TV listening to podcasts trying to keep myself calm it's been very good knitting to have um, so yeah that's everything that I have been working on before I let you go I do have a couple of current crushes to talk about so as I said before these aren't really dream knits because I'm not sure if I'm ever gonna knit them but they are things that I've been really obsessed with recently. So I'm just going to grab my computer because I have them all up on Ravelry. So I can give you a, give you a beautiful visual picture. I will pop pictures in so you can see what I'm talking about. But yeah. So I can give you, paint a picture with my words. So the first one um, is a jumper. It is The Widow's Kiss by Thea Coleman. Um, and I think she's done this collection. I'm not sure if it's like a book. Um, I think it's like a book book um, called Baby Cocktails. And, oh, excuse me. And all of the patterns in it are really, really cute. But this in particular, this jumper called The Widow's Kiss is really, really spectacular. So it has kind of um, a wide body ribbed neckline that flows into a really pretty cabled pattern um, yeah and it's knit, knit in worsted weight and it's just a really really pretty jumper um, and really unique um, haven't really seen much something that's quite original and unique which is something that I like and it seems to look good on everybody so that's something that I have kind of obsessively been staring at and um, follow, um, creeping on the hashtags on Instagram and just looking at everyone's beautiful projects. Um, Thea's sample is in like a grey brown but a lot of people have knit it in some really pretty colours and it looks, it looks really beautiful. Um, the next one that I have is a very recent release from Lerka of Fibre Tales which is a really lovely podcast and she's also a lovely designer. It's her Fia cardigan. Um, it's a, sorry I'm looking down, it's like a fingering weight, very like kind of cropped boxy cardigan with a nice deep V and this really pretty little cable detail um, around the sides and armholes. Um, and yeah, it looks like it's a fairly easily adaptable pattern. Um, it has like a really cute 
kind of almost like a lacy rib around the that could just be the photo though um around the cuffs and it just looks really lovely and once again that I think that's just been released this week and um all of the sample knitted versions have been are uh, really 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 nice so I think that looks like a really lovely versatile cardigan that would be quite easy and I already have in mind I think what yarn I would want to knit it in so yeah it's really lovely and all of all of her photos are really beautiful um this looks like a really really great pattern and the last the last current crushes I have to talk about is probably like the one I've been most obsessed with I think I've just been staring at this Ravelry page for weeks it's really lovely it's a collection <clears throat> excuse me it's a collection that Whitney Hayward has done um, in collaboration with Harrisville designs for their new nightshades yarn collection which is this really really beautiful um, yarn they're all kind of just shades of black so they almost remind me of you know like a light reflected on like a dark wet road at night time that kind of like neon lights reflected on a dark wet road it's kind of what all the colors look like to me and it's really really cool and um, Whitney has designed a collection there are seven pieces um, that's based on using this yarn and the like just the the pattern photos the um the art direction of them is just gorgeous um the model is beautiful and the patterns are all just all of them i can't even pick a favorite um there's a there's a tunic and two pullovers and a tank top that are all super nice um there's one that's kind of like a simple turtleneck the sable pullover that I think is like adaptable from like tunic length to cropped length. There's a short sleeve tunic that's really lovely, the Kalem tunic. And there's like a really pretty cabled jumper called the Umbra pullover. But all of them, I'll have it linked down below. Just go and look at the beautiful pattern photos, this gorgeous collection. And the yarn looks really, really lovely as well. So yeah, oh, it's just really good. It's really, really good. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I've been thinking about lately, which is very not weather appropriate. As you see, it's more like giant cable jumpers, which is definitely not what I'm going to be knitting anytime soon. And um, because it's very hot, very sunny, and I have in my Ravelry queue, I still have a whole bunch of summer tops that I want to knit. Um, just because I think that will be a really versatile way to add a lot of a lot more knitwear to kind of my everyday wardrobe. Um, to do some nice summer tops. Um, so that's about all I have for today. If you have any thoughts, comments, questions, concerns, feel free to leave them down below or to come and say hi to me on Instagram or Ravelry. Um, thank you so much for taking some time to spend with me today and talk about knitting. Hopefully I will have a whole bunch more progress to show you in a couple of weeks time because there's going to be a lot more bed rest <laughs> in my future. I think by the time I film again in two weeks, I still won't have gone back to work. Um, I'll still be still be recovering at home from my surgery. So hopefully that means a lot of knitting time. Um, yeah, so let me know what you're knitting. If you have any current crushes, any patterns you are currently obsessed with. Uh, let me know, leave them down below and yeah, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye!